when a lion doesn't concern itself with the opinion of sheep, or when a lone wolf roams outside the lines of traditional dominance hierarchies, it paves the way for the inborn sigma. Similar to Animal Kingdom, a person within the socio-sexual hierarchy who chooses to live his life outside of the typical structures of society is known as a sigma. Because the last time I checked, you're locked in here with me, and I'm the one with the gun. No, Mr. Sanders. You are locked in here with me, and you just brought me mine. Sigma Grindset is the state of mind of a person who is self-reliant and independent, which their power doesn't come from a societal hierarchy, rather from their inner being. Are you the best footballer in the world right now? I think so, yes. In my mind, I'm always the best. I don't care what the people think, what they say. In my mind, not just this year, but always, I'm always the best. When it comes to Batman, his actions speak for themselves. The way he tames the Deltas, silences the Betas. I don't need an ethics lesson from a nut dressed up like a bat. Too bad. You just got one. And Triumphs the Alphas is always a grand spectacle to anyone seeing. Mine are bigger than yours. Amanda Waller, a secret government agent who heads the Project Cadmus, is regarded as somewhat of an obnoxious or repellent character by the viewers. However, when it comes to her relationships with Batman, it is somewhat vague and uncertain. In Batman Animated Universe, she considers Batman as a hindrance to the patriotic work and a threat to national security. When it comes down to DC Cinematic Universe, she respects Batman and even comes to him seeking protection. What do you want? People are asking questions about Midway City. The kind of people who can get the answers, and if they can get those answers, my head will be on a pike. Consider yourself under my protection, if you deliver. In Justice League TV series, her attitude towards the caped crusader changes down the line. Yet in the beginning, it was all guns blazing. To lessen the public frenzy towards the Justice League, Project Cadmus brings a rival superhero team, the Ultimen. Initially, the Ultimen were fighting crime and doing good, similar to the League. However, when they learned that they were artificial beings, cloned to serve as living weapons for the US government, and their memories of childhood were falsely implanted, they broke the hell loose. One can understand the emotional trauma it caused to Ultimen, and Justice League was the first to respond to their dismay. Cadmus, on the other hand, thought of them as a failed experiment and was ready to replace them. When Waller and personnel of Cadmus tried to take custody of Long Shadow, a member of Ultimen who is now with the League, conflict arises. As Waller steps in to confront League with her guards, guess who stepped in to defy Waller? No. You need to step back. Not gonna happen. Long shadows with us. Safeties. Mine are bigger than yours. Stand down. He's free to go with you. It's too technical. Wayne Enterprises. Hailed as one of the three largest and the oldest conglomerate in the fictional world, was founded by merchant ancestors of the Wayne family in the 17th century. However, with the untimely demise of the fifth generation heir, Thomas Wayne, son of Patrick Wayne, reigns of the behemoth fall into the hands of William Earl, an autocratic, who was focusing solely on generating profits and neglecting the socio-economic responsibilities of a large corporation towards the public. You're in excellent hands. We'll be watching the Empire. When you grow up, it'll be waiting for you. In his teen days, Bruce suddenly disappears from the face of the Earth to pursue knowledge and skills that are inaccessible to the General. Turning this into his advantage, Earl had Bruce declared dead and started taking Wayne Enterprises public. Even after years, when Bruce returned to Gotham, he didn't see that as a threat. Earl saw that as an opportunity to lure Mr. Wayne to succeed his plans while keeping him under control and out of the way. On the other hand, Bruce, who is now neither naive nor gullible as his younger days, plays right into Earl's hands, letting him have the upper hand and do glory for the moment. I'm sure you realize I can't stop the big machine. Too many wheels turning, we're going public. I understand. I'm not looking to interfere. I am looking for a job. 
Oh. Thinking everything has started to come his way, Earl becomes much bolder, demoting Lucius Fox from the board and even continuing to fire him. I'm merging your department with archives. And I'm firing you. Did you get the memo? Also, him even showing no respect towards Bruce right after the Enterprise goes public is so nasty in nature. How'd the uh, stock offering go? Price is short. It was buying all kinds of funds and brokerages. It's a bit technical. The key thing is our company's future is secure. Ironically, the very words he has spoken come back to haunt him when Vigilante Billionaire takes matters into his hands. Fox, I seem to remember firing you. You did. I got another job. Yours. Whose authority? Bruce Wayne? What makes you think you can decide who's running Wayne Enterprises? Well, the fact that I'm the owner. What are you talking about? The company went public a week ago. And I bought most of the shares. Through various charitable foundations and trusts and so forth. Look, it's all a bit technical, but the important thing is that my company's future is secure. Right, Mr. Fox? Right you are, Mr. Wayne. Didn't you get the memo? Sorry, you are outvoted. Batman is a character who is acclaimed universally for two main things. For his ingenious intellect and for the attitude of never giving up. Will of Iron and refusal to stay down makes him one of the hardest to melt and dealt. This sheer perseverance gives him the ability to push himself beyond the physical boundaries of a normal human being. Makes it impossible for one to match his combat and survival skills. Unless you are a descendant of the demon's head, Ra's al Ghul. Yet, in the Justice League TV series, former Marine Jon Stewart, known to us as Green Lantern, brings up the idea of holding practice sessions after the near failure himself and John Jones experienced at the hands of Shade. While other leaguers don't have much of an idea about the cons of this suggestion, it was Batman who pointed out that sessions that aren't vital can waste their valuable time. What do we really have to lose? Time. Nevertheless, with others' consent, Batman became the only one who opposed. Following, Lantern even made a beta move against Batman, but he who knows the gravity and depth didn't reply in vain. Looks like you're outvoted. When the time comes to show the man's skills, Batman defeated all the autonomous robots, leaving Green Lantern speechless. Happy? Call me when it's important, and not before. Although Batman wasn't able to stop Secret Society from breaking Clayface out as he was busy with so-called practice sessions, he arrived just in time to get the information from the bedridden Morgan Edge on the Secret Society's infiltration. Mr. Wayne, you really are the world's greatest. Be it Superman animated series, Batman animated series, or the movie Dawn of Justice, this duo always start off on the wrong foot. The part they become allies, we all know about that. The bittersweet lies within the early stages of their encounters. Every time Superman, the Alpha, has resolved to quick and easy methods to reveal the secret identity of Batman. Mr. Wayne. But we all know Batman. Guy wouldn't resolve to use such shallow methods to bestow the soups. Bats will return the favor for sure, but in a way. Much smoother yet especially savage. <laughs> and they call me a split personality. Mr. Wayne, you really are the world's greatest detective. Because when it comes to the Dark Knight, if you knock him down, you better pray that he doesn't get up. If he does, you're gonna end up in a sorry state worse than the great Superman ended up. The man will make you powerless, reveal your deepest secret, and steal your most precious within hours. And you'll have nothing to do but stare jaw-dropped while trying to guess what the devil just happened. So, Mr. Wayne, ready to sweep me off my feet? Be seeing you. You weren't concentrating enough. Compared to other Green Lanterns, Hal Jordan in movie Justice League War was always a pompous vase. The Beta Lantern, not knowing the capabilities or hostilities of Batman, tried to own him. 
Nobody asked you to prom, so now you dress as a bat and prowl around your parents' basement? All that time, Batman didn't try to explain anything, but in true Sigma fashion, kept quiet until the perfect moment arrives. But fire's no problem for me. As I was saying, Green Lantern can do anything. Except shut up, apparently. Lantern was showing off what he can do with his ring and how easy it is for him to do the stuff. However, to Batman, he was like a boy with a fancy toy, because the truth is that a person with just a stone, if he is skilled enough, can defeat a shuriken user. Therefore, when the time comes, showing off Beta turns into a puppy in front of the ultimate Sigma. What's this do? Huh? How'd you do that? You weren't concentrating. You won't do that again. Unless I want to. And if you'd like to support me, check out the Top Flicks merch. Until next time, then.